I just wanted to make a comment or say one thing about people in Chicago. Not everybody, of course. It's not going to... Nothing's ever going to um, be about everybody, you know. Talk about a race. It's not everybody. It's not every Muslim. It's not every Jew. It's not every Christian. It's not everybody in Chicago. Okay, but... It's not every man or woman. But a lot of people here have that thing where... They say the, the crabs, when you put them in a pot of boiling water, one will be just about to get out, and another one will grab it by the leg and pull it down into the boiling water to try and lift itself out. And they're all doomed. You know, one might escape if the other don't dr drag it down, you know? Although, you know, the crab is going to just get caught by the chef and thrown back in the pot. But the metaphor is still valid. Um, you know, I notice a lot of people will hate on other people who don't have shit, too. Um, a lot of people will hate on people if they see that person have some kind of, like, light inside of them or some kind of goodness about them where they want to help shit. They want to make things better. You know, these motherfuckers are some sons of bitches out here. Point blank period. Now, I don't think there's bad men either. I know there's good in everybody. But it's just the way they've been raised up. Everybody talks shit here. It's like a fucking... It's like a fucking hobby to talk shit here. Everybody does it. And the fucked up thing about everybody doing it is another metaphor. Is it's the pot calling the kettle black. It's hypocrite. It's hypocrite shit. These motherfuckers talk crazy about somebody and talk shit about somebody. It's projecting. Just like when the Democrats go out there and call all the, you know, people who vote for Trump racist. We know these elite Democrats, like Hillary, are the one that are really racist. When you ask her what she's got in her purse, she says, I got hot sauce. And you say, don't you know you're uh, pandering? You sound like you're pandering to the African-American community. And she says, is it working? And then the next sentence, she'll call all the white Trump supporters racist. Oh, you just sat there and lied and said you had hot sauce in your purse. These are the type of motherfuckers that are out here. That's why a lot of times you'll see people get the fuck out of here as soon as possible. I mean, back in the day, it was different. There was a lot more Debo shit going on. A lot more doors kicked in. A lot more... It still happens, though. There's still a lot of armed robberies, and armed robberies, unfortunately, turn into murder. You know, they. I never understood why you go to rob somebody, you get what you want, and then you kill everybody. But time after time, I've heard that story told. I've heard it told by the motherfucker and did it. Then on the other hand, I've heard people tell me stories like, man, I did this to these people, I robbed these people, and I, I had mercy on them motherfuckers. But if I would have killed them, I'd have been a free man right now. So you hear some wild shit. I'm not saying that is... I'm not saying any of that thought process is right. But I've heard people actually say if I would have killed them, I wouldn't be here right now because there wouldn't be no fucking buddy pointing a finger at me. But, just fucking haters. Same thing when it comes to comedy clubs. Um, these motherfuckers, you know, they're comedians. These guys got way too big of egos than they need. Like, you're nobody. I thought we were here to have fun at this comedy club and tell jokes. No, these bogus, boring Weirdo losers actually think that this is a jumping point for their career. I'm thinking to myself, these guys are actually thinking that they're going to make it big with their tired ass fucking shtick and their tired ass joke and no personality. And I'm still not going to be mean to them, but they're the first motherfucker to talk shit about somebody else. And they're always talking shit about somebody who's funnier. They never talk shit about somebody who sucks. It's always a jealousy and an envy thing. Motherfuckers will hate you because you're tall. 
motherfuckers will hate you because, you know, you got a better car than them. Motherfuckers will just hate you because they don't like your face, point blank, period. And they hate everybody. They might hate you because you're white. And the news media constantly tells them that because you have white skin, you didn't have no hardships in life. So even though we know as white people we've had tons of bullshit hardships, people are going to look at us and some are going to fall for the hype and think to themselves, this guy, didn't, this guy didn't go through shit in life, you know? This guy hasn't been through shit in life. Like, what the fuck? Are you, are you fucking kidding me? So now you got to deal with that. Then you got the worst type of motherfuckers. Anya, like that girl Christina. This girl Christina, right? So she grows up in Payless Heights. And we all lived over on 30th and Albany because my buddy had a um, apartment that we were fixing up rehab in, you know? So I lived there for free. Well, she ended up staying down the street, right? And this girl asked, asked us in front of her, where are you guys from? And I didn't even pay no attention to it, but Anya was like, did you hear her? She said, oh, they're from the suburbs. And I'm thinking to myself, damn, this bitch grew up in Payless Hills since she was like a baby till, I don't know, like last year. And she's like a, a pretty much a piece of shit scumbag bitch, but she's trying to sit there and act like she's cool because she currently lives in a base a, a basement that she can barely afford and somebody's helping her pay for and she tried to talk tell that girl like oh they're from the suburbs now i grew up in 600 in california first through eighth grade and a, and a little bit of the beginning here of high school and i've grown and i've lived in 38th in michigan 38th in albany for two years i lived um two years i lived for free with dr margaret burroughs in the first african-american museum but I'm not going around fucking telling everybody my fucking life story because I need them fucking cool points. You know what I mean? And this is fucking bullshit. Do you fucking turn lanes? What is this? Not a bike lane? It's a bike lane. Dude, I'm gonna fucking kill these people. Go. You wanna go so bad? Go. Go. You wanna go so fucking bad? fucking cunt then you got the police in front of you it's just a fucking nightmare around here they got these bike lanes we're supposed to think these are two lanes but they're not because oh we didn't see the fucking shit on the ground from a mile away it's a fucking bike lane anyway she's like oh they're from the suburbs bitch you just moved to the city a year ago but i'm not gonna argue with her my girlfriend told me after the fact and i was like yeah i was like you're right she did say that shit, but I don't care. I'm not going to sit there and be like, I have the name all the times I lived within the city. There's nice places to live in the city. Shit. There's really, really, up. there's a Gold Coast. So I'd rather live in the Gold Coast than fucking Harvey and Markham. And fucking, you know, it doesn't matter though. I want to live in Harvey and Markham. Now that I think about it, the fucking rent is cheap out in the south suburbs. Where it's 80% black. Blue Island, it's 50-50. You can get a nice place for a decent price. And I don't think, you know, and I'm going to mind my business and nobody's going to fuck with me. So, they think they're cool, man, because they live in Chicago. It's pathetic. I live on, I live on this street, bro. I'm so cool. Oh, okay. Uh, so, are you like the biggest gangster over there? Like, everybody knows you and you got a reputation for being just a straight killer oh no you're just on the phone like you get cool points because you live on that block like you get cool points okay bro nobody gives a fuck that's one of the scumbag things people do in chicago so they'll look at you if you're uh, if you're white and be like oh he hasn't been through shit because the media tells him to but who cares fuck him i personally want to go around and dress as clean and as preppy as possible so people look at me and think that's a really nice young man he keeps himself clean cut 
You know? That's the way to be. What, what do you think I want to do? Get a fucking face tattoo? And fucking walk around and never get a job? You fucking idiots. You're cool because you... I mean, if you got a teardrop when you were young, good for you. I mean, I'm not hating on you for that shit. But don't think you're, like, cool or something. I'd rather be the motherfucker when he gets pulled over. He don't got a bunch of fucking tattoos and shit. Here's my license. Here's my license. Here's my motherfucking insurance. Let me be on my motherfucking way, bro. I'm not a tough guy. I ain't none of that shit. The tough guy don't get to go home at the end of the night. The quiet motherfucker does. You know? So, you know, basically the point is these people are fucking flaky as hell. You got to watch your friends around here. You don't even really need friends. I went to church. I'll go to church and try to make some real friends. Some friends that I know at least have some morals. I'm not trying to hang out with people that I have had bad experiences with in the past, man. So, that cool shit, that's over with. For me, I'm past 30. I made 30 years old, okay? You make 30 years old, I think it's time for you to stop trying to act tough and act like you're some big gangster and all this bullshit. That's that bullshit we did when we were 18. God, it got our ass fucked up. You know? There's motherfuckers who thought that shit was cool, and guess what? They're beating their dick in a motherfucking cell for the rest of their life. Not getting no pussy, not getting no real food for the rest of their motherfucking life in Pontiac, Menard, all these joints. Because they thought it was cool. That's what that gets you. Or they're dead. So that's what I have to fucking say about that. Don't fucking try and be cool or fucking tough. Just mind your business and help the motherfuckers around you the best you can. And try to get closer to God. That's it.